ambition, power, success. These are the things that a 1947 film directed by Edmund Goldwyn and starring Tyron Power, Joan Blondell and Helen Walker is about. The movie Nightmare Alley. Hello folks, I'm Daniel Nobre. And for this presentation, this review is one of my favorite film noirs classic that it was very underrated, but now is coming back to its rightful place. And stay with me because we're going to be talking about the story of this film. I'm going to be reviewing the film for you. And this is Cinemin. I'm your host, Daniel Nobre. Welcome to Cinemin. For the fans of the Criterion Collection, international films, independent films, and American classics. Please subscribe and enjoy this channel. And for this review, I'm using my DVD edition from Fox Film Noir Collection. And here is the new edition from the Criterion Collection in Blu-ray and DVD, 4K resolution, new cover by Ricardo Disenho, also audio commentary from 2005 featuring historians James Rizzini and Alan Silver. New interview with critic Imogen Sarah Smith. New interview with performer and historian Todd Robbins. Interview from 2007 with actor Colleen Gray. Audio excerpt from a 1971 interview with Henry King in which the filmmaker discussed actor Tyron Power. Plus an essay by film writer and screenwriter Kim Morgan. So at the beginning of the film we learned that we have Stanton Stan Carlyle, portrayed by Tyron Power, a man with several ambitions. He works as an assistant in a carnival show from the main attraction, Zena the Mentalist. And Zena is married with Pete, which is constantly drunk. Perfectly casted is Joan Blondell on the role of Zena. So Zena and Pete in the past developed a certain code that used to allow them to read people's minds. And they were very successful in the past. Stan then sees an opportunity to one day learn the code and leave for good the carnival. What are you thinking about, Stan? Molly was telling me about that code you and Pete used to use in Vaudeville. What about it? Well, I, I was thinking that if he got sick or something, why, I could work from the audience just like he used to. No stage trap, no gypsy switch. What do you mean? You know, if, if you taught me the code. Over oh, my dead body, she will. He stand also meets Molly that also lives in a carnival and has a relation with the strong man of the carnival called Bruno. And beautiful actress Colleen Gray is Molly. The two main attractions from this carnival are Zena and the Geek. The Geek is a kind of freak show. It's a guy that looks prehistoric and he eats chicken alive in front of the people that got amazed seeing that kind of performance and shocked at the same time. I must ask you to remember that this exhibit is being presented solely in the interest of education and science. Uh, this creature, there he is, the geek. He has puzzled the formal scientists of Europe and America. Is he the missing link? Is he man or beast? We don't see much of the geek throughout the film, but he's a strong character in the whole story because Stan develops some kind of fascination and fear, wondering what happened in the life of a man to come to that low point and perform that kind of gross stuff in front of an audience. So one night, Stan decides to give Pete a booze and discover some of his past secrets about the code. 
By mistake, he gives him methyl alcohol. And the next following morning, Pete dies. Now, even though it's not necessarily Stan's fault, he feels guilty for what happened to Pete. I don't know. I think she's over picking up her dope. What's up? It's Pete. We can't wake him. What's wrong with it? I don't know. Everybody's scared to death. Well, come on. Then a little time go by and Zena decides to teach to Stan the tricks about the code and Molly helps him. After an incident, Stan is forced to marry Molly and both decide to move to Chicago. Finally in Chicago and in a famous high-scale nightclub, the performance of Stan and Molly got noticed by the society and one of the evenings they meet the third important woman on Stan's life. Now will you read the lady's question? The question is, do you think my mother will recover from her present illness? Is that correct? What is your answer? I'm afraid a truthful reply to that question will appear rather strange. I don't know whether I should answer it or not. Why? I get the impression that the lady's mother has been dead for some time. If that is incorrect, will the lady please say so? I must assume that the lady's silence means assent. And the third woman, it is Lilith Ryder, a psychologist portrayed by the beautiful Helen Walker, that also turns out to be a kind of shady professional, as later Stan will find out. Together with Lilith, Stan plans a big scheme to take money from very wealthy people. And they plan and goes well until one event changes everything. William Lindsay Gresham is the author of the novel which one this movie is based. And I believe that Tyron Power read the book, liked it so much that asked Daryl Zanuck to purchase the rights and turn to a movie. Zanuck agreed because a year before he and director Edmund Goldwyn, same director here, made the movie Razor's Edge, already an anti-hero character that Tyrone portrayed in there, but the movie turned out to be a very good box office. So they were thinking probably this movie also will be the same. However, Zanuck didn't like the film, this one, because he found a little bit distasteful because the end of the movie. So he tried to even highlight and change, it did change, at the end, the film, but he did not interfere during production with this movie. You told her about it. How could I? I haven't seen How it. How else did she find out about I it? I swear I haven't seen I it. I told Thank you that I didn't want you to breathe it to a soul. She didn't have to tell me about it. It's all here, plain as day. Doesn't say what this new stunt is, but you're going to the top like a skyrocket. Stan, turn that card over and we'll see how it'll end up. Who else did you tell? Look, Stan, turn that card over. Well, I don't care what the card says. Leave it alone. Hangman, you better watch yourself. Is that bad? No, he doesn't go against it. But Tyrone liked so much the book, and he, I believe he, he was looking also for something different to portray because he always the type of romantic hero, always the nice guy. So he's trying to change his image for some more solid performance like the one that he gives in here. And the audience did not respond accordingly. Matter of fact, they got shocked and they didn't like the movie when the movie came about, so the movie turned out to be a flop in the box office. Director Guillermo del Toro will bring a new version of Nightmare Alley, starring Bradley Cooper on the role that it was portrayed by Tyrone Power, that is also Kate Blanchett, that is Rooney Mara, and uh, Tony Collette, portraying the three main women characters on the film and supposed to be is gonna start in December for the last time I checked and I think it's gonna be great because he's putting out during the Oscar 
season, so I think he's expecting nominations for the new version of Nightmare Alley. This title is a must on my collection. I don't care if I duplicate in the film, I wanna see this film in a 4K print, and there's a lot of extras on the Criterion Collection. The only thing that this copy comes, it is, and it is in the Criterion Collection edition, is James Rizzini, Alan Silver commentary. They are authorities in film noir. They have several books about film noir. So I'm excited to have that also. My recommendation, do not watch the film with the commentary first if you haven't seen the film. Watch the film and then go for the commentary because there's a lot of spoilers all over. So perhaps that kills a little bit of the surprises that this movie gives you. Okay, at the end of this presentation, I must thank you all the subscribers of my channel. If you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Please hit the button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Don't forget to leave your thumbs up if you like this presentation. I would like to know what you think about this movie. Put your comments in there. I would like to know your impressions as well, and I'll respond to all of you. Okay? I see you guys on our next presentation here in Cinemin. I'm Daniel Aubrey. Goodbye.